because you don't keep secrets well. No, you don't. And you should have kept a lot of this stuff secret because now we know exactly what you want us to do and how we, you're expecting us to behave. If we know your plan, then we can't be duped by it. If we know how you're expecting us to behave so you can execute your plan, <laughs> your plan fails. Isn't that too bad? And then I'll show you this one. Show you this one. I'm gonna, do we have this up on the 103 anywhere? We do? Um, yeah, okay, can we put it up on that one so I can walk over to it or not? Okay, I'm gonna walk over to this one. I wanna show you this. I don't want you to get frustrated. I, I heard from somebody the other day, they said, well, well, I'm not gonna go to Washington anymore because I've gone over and over again and nothing happens. Oh, oh, that's a good plan. Yeah, you just stay at home and give up. That's a good plan, that'll work out well. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. To your last breath, somebody has a gun to your head, you keep going. What do you think this is? Who do, you, who do you think you are? You are the defender. Every other time in American history, except for the Civil War and the Revolutionary War, men had to go overseas to fight. You're here now. You may not have a gun. You may not have uniforms. You may not have your boots on yet, but you get your damn boots on. Somewhere, my chief of staff is counting that I just used the D word. I apologize. Don't you get frustrated. This is, this is Bill Moyers from PBS. He's a good guy. Not that Bill Moyers? Oh, I thought it was that Bill Moyers. Oh, good, then I feel better about it. This is the eight stages of social movement and success. All right. We're going to go into this a little bit tomorrow. As, or I mean, uh, next week is part of it. Next, probably by the end of the week. I just saw this today, and I just looked at it real quick. It's it's the stages of social movement. And we're about here. Perception of failure. Look at this. See goals unachieved. See power holders unchanged. See the numbers down at demonstrations. Despair, hopelessness, burnout, dropout. Seems movement is ended. Tea Partiers, is that how you feel? Is that how you feel? Because I know a lot of people that feel this way. Then there's an emergence of a negative rebel. Don't allow that to happen. Don't allow that to happen. Be on the lookout for that. A negative rebel. Don't despair. It's part of it. They will convince you. They need you to be convinced. They need you to be like, so angry. You just want to pick up a gun or hit somebody in the face. And believe me, I, I was so angry yesterday. I threw that financial bill at the camera. I apologize to you because you don't want to be angry. That's what they need you to be. If Yoda were here, he'd say, mm, yes. If the, empire, if the emperor were here, he'd say, feel the power. Feel your hatred. Don't do it. Watch Star Wars this weekend. You'll learn a lot. We got to bring people together and you got to hold people together and you need to look at each other and say, buck up, man. I want to show you two things. I showed you this yesterday. There were two things on Ronald Reagan's desk that are important for you to understand. This one. Somebody just gave this to me two days ago. I now have these on my desk. This is fantastic. There is no limit what a man can do or where he can go if he doesn't mind who gets the credit. You can get this at the Ronald Reagan Library. Put it on your desk. Look at it. Here's the thing. I learned this lesson early on in my time here at Fox. I am not here at Fox for any other reason. Look, I've got like 1,400 jobs. It's this darn Obama economy that makes me work all these jobs. I've got like 400 jobs. You know why I work here at Fox? Because I believe in something. And these people are the only brave people in the country that will allow somebody to say what they believe. I am here because I believe in something. I don't care who gets the credit. I don't care. 
I, I'd like to go back and being a dad. You know, I've said how many times in this program, oh, gee, uh, I wish George Washington were here. When's George Washington going to show up? You know what? George Washington ain't going to show up because George Washington didn't even know he was George Washington at the time. He didn't know. He just did what he felt he had to do. That's you. That's me. That's all of us. 912er called my office and said, was pleading to one of the guys, Glenn Beck has got to take a leadership position, blah, blah, blah. I said, why did he say that? Well, Glenn, he's very frustrated because, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They're not leaders. They've never done this before. I said, call him back. Ask him, do you think Glenn does? I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm not a journalist. Ten years ago, I was a top 40 DJ. I educated myself. I don't know what I'm doing. When somebody says, oh, Glenn Beck, he's just a clown. He doesn't know. Yeah, they're out half right. I'm a dad. I'm busy. I'm tired. But these are the times that try men's souls. God helps those that help themselves. Let's help ourselves. Put your boots on. In my lifetime, I have never served my country. I have never put my boots on and gone out into the field with a gun. I'd wet my pants. Those guys are heroes. But every one of those heroes will tell you, no, sir, I just did what I was supposed to do. Are you doing what you're supposed to do? If you're overseas, thank God you're picking up a gun. Thank God you are picking up a gun. If you are here in country and you're on this side, of the, uh, this side of the fight, thank God you're not picking up a gun. To everything there is a season. And I have not yet begun to fight. I'm not worn out because I expect miracles. Expect them. There are people now who are saying, I don't know, 828, I don't know if I'm going to go. Or I don't know if I'm going to go to another tea party. I don't know. Well, if you're done then the republic truly is done. They have life. They have your pursuit of happiness. If you're done, they will take your liberty as well. Not now. Not tomorrow. Not ever. They will have to kill me first. I will never stop talking. I will never stop standing up. I will never take my boots off. We must mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Back in a minute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The high school student who brought those words back. Next. You know, I know you probably feel alone. You feel like you can't do great things and you're just a, you know, whatever you are. I'm just a, I'm just a construction worker, whatever. Well, here are some other people that thought they were just whatever. And look what they're accomplishing. Watch. Americans don't need to be taught how to give, how to take care of one another. They certainly don't have to be forced to be charitable because Americans already are. You might have heard about this man. His name is Gustus Bozarth. He's unemployed, he's homeless, and man, does he love his country. A few weeks ago, he saw an American flag knocked to the ground during a storm in El Paso, Texas. He didn't know surveillance cameras were rolling, but they were, and they caught him not only picking up that flag, but delicately folding it with the respect and honor it deserves. So many people have been touched by his act of kindness that they're now offering to help get Gus back on his feet. They're U.S. soldiers, and they weren't even U.S. citizens until a few weeks ago. Can you imagine putting your life on the line for a country that wasn't even yours? On the 4th of July, 156 U.S. service members from 56 countries became Americans at Camp Victory in Baghdad. Now, one might argue, though, they've always been Americans. They just now have the papers to prove it. Congratulations, you are now United States citizens. God bless you. 
bless America. God bless us all. In the recent cash-strapped city of Detroit, 77 public parks recently risked closure. The city could no longer afford to keep them up. So, who do they turn to? We the people. Residents started digging into their own pockets and digging in the dirt to help maintain the parks. Some have mowed lawns. Others are filling cracks in the asphalt and purchasing park benches on their own dime. 60-year-old Howard King Jr. is one of them. It's like therapy to me. And you know, it's like therapy. It makes me feel good when I can see my area where I stay at looks good. Right now, he's working on helping restore Scripps Park in downtown Detroit. The city, they have given up on the park, and it looks real bad, so we're going to come together. And